Hey, it's Coach Tulin, and I'm here to answer some of those questions that I asked you what you wanted to learn more about. People think motivation just comes to me or that somehow motivation is supposed to land in your lap. It doesn't. It's really something that we have to work hard at and repeat daily, multiple times a day, even starting when we work out. But what happens is people ask me, like, how do you stay motivated while working out? Okay. The first thing that people normally do is they come in with an exit plan. They come in with a health and fitness exit plan because they have this large data set of all these times they tried to start something or these times they had lost weight and gained it back or they started and they never finish what they start. Um, uh, they have a hard time staying motivated in their process. This is everybody's problem. This is not just those that are plus size. This is something everyone struggles with. But what I notice is with those people that I coach is they tend to come in with an exit plan. So it'll be things like, oh, I don't know, I can work out in the morning or, uh, you know, six days a week is really difficult for me, but I could do five. Um, oh, I'm not sure if I could do that. Oh, I, I, I don't know if I can give up the foods that I, I, I really, really like. Coaching is coaching. It's not coddling. I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm going to help you through that process. So what we do is before we ever even step foot into our workouts, we're so busy trying to be perfect about, let's say you're doing an at-home DVD. So you, you read the nutrition plan and you read the workout and you're like, hey, I have to do this perfectly. And on Monday, I'm going to start and I'm going to do the workout and I'm going to eat well all day long, et cetera, et cetera. You plan, you're all there about hour eight into your day. You've already had a boo-boo and you say, you know what? I screwed up again. I'm going to restart on Monday. And it's this vicious cycle. That is the fitness exit. That's the health and fitness exit plan. You don't need that. What you need is to be able to change the conversation that happens between your ears and learning how to celebrate progress. See, the progress was that you got set up and ready to go and you did, you got your workout in, you took your lunch with you, you had a really great breakfast and by dinner time, maybe you, you blew it, okay? There are so many things that happened in that day that was progress that are non-scale victories that can help you focus on health gains versus weight loss. See. The original way you go in trying to be perfect is a focus on weight loss. When you're focusing on celebrating your journey and embracing that journey to fit, you start looking and celebrating the things that you did and you'll recognize the things that you accomplished were so much greater than the couple of things that you didn't. So our focus should be here versus here. Now John Acuff in um, Start Punch Fear in the Face uh, calls it critics math, okay? If you have one person say something negative, but you have 10,000 people say amazing things to you, what do you focus on? The negative thing. You'll allow that negative thing and the one thing that didn't go right to ruin your day. That's critics math. So like 10,000 positives plus one negative equals one negative. That's a choice. When we start focusing on the positive things we've done and just go, okay, here's the things that um, I could have done better, or here's the things that I'm gonna focus on and come up with a good game plan, then it becomes about the journey and not about what you didn't do. That's that process. That gets you out of the exit plan. So the first thing that you have to do is toss that out of the window. The only time you want an exit plan is you're sitting on an airplane and you want to know where the exit doors are. That's when you need an exit plan, not in health and fitness. Your road to fit, your health and journey, you will be fit way before you ever hit any number on a scale way before you hit any size goal that you might have. There is so much that happens before you ever get there that if you only focus on those numbers and don't see the bigger picture, that makes you wanna quit. But I'd rather focus on all of this than this. Just measurements are just a number. It's only a number. And the scale is supposed to measure our worth. Wouldn't it be worth more if we weighed more? That's how ridiculous this whole thing is. Now look, I've been there. I'm a recovered anorexic. I've been on all ends of the uh, eating disorder spectrum, uh, body dysmorphia, you, you name it. I've been there, so I get it. So never downplaying what that feeling is, but you can start changing the way that you look at health and fitness by again, tossing out your exit plan, focusing on the positives, focusing on the amazing things you accomplish, and learning how to better treat the things you didn't by getting help. Maybe it's a coach, maybe it's personal development, maybe it's reaching out to other women who are on the same journey that you are. We learn from each other. I've learned from many people, and here I am teaching you the same thing. Now let's talk about balance in life between um, health and fitness and life in general. So for those who have a family or maybe are caregivers, um, let's go back to the airplane for a second. When the oxygen mask drops, the instructions are to put the mask on yourself before you put it on your child. 
right? It's you first, then your child. Why is that? You can take better care of those in your life if you start taking better care of you. Why? Your energy is better. You are healthier, if not healthy. You are better able to give and you create more balance in your life. Many of us have mommy's guilt or caregiver's guilt and we feel that all of our extras and all of our time have to go to these little beings. You guys, we are so there for them. We are doing so much for them. But how much more would it mean for, let's, let's talk about kids for a minute, for the kids, if we had better energy and better health to go run with them to the park, to actually want to go to the park, that we're no longer sitting on the sidelines, that we're actually running around the jungle gym with them, or tossing a frisbee around, or, 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 or. What means more to the people, the very people that you were sacrificing your own health for, that your own life for, how much more would it mean for them if you put the oxygen mask on yourself than them. My father-in-law told me about that several years ago when we were going through all the things that I've shared with you in the past. I did that too. It is a guilt. We do get guilty. And I'm not going to downplay that and say that it doesn't happen. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that you're worthy. You're worth the time. And because you have such a giving heart, give to you, give to your body that's helping you get through whatever it is that you're dealing with. Give back to your body who maybe have put on a lot of weight. Give thanks that it helps you get through whatever tragic situation that may be attached to that. Take care of you so you can take better care of the ones that you love.